Before we get started, I want to talk about three-star movies. Yes, four-star movies are amazing, but I think the actual best movies might be three-star movies. We've talked about this before. We have? Yes. When? I don't remember, but I know we've talked about this. Here on the show? <laughs> it sounds very familiar. I've had this theory for a while. Finish it up. If it starts sounding really familiar, then I'll know we talked well, about it. Well, this next part isn't going to sound familiar. I chose a movie off of Hulu, The Spy Who Dumped Me. Mm. It's not a great movie. Yeah. But it's a type of movie that back during high school or whatever, it was just a safe bet. We'll all like this movie. It's got action, it's got comedy, it's got trapeze in it, so Tona would love it. But is it great? No, it's got a lot of bad jokes in it. Well, just look at the title. So it's never going to be great. But it's a three-star movie. A four-star movie is not the one you watch with all of your buddies. The Killing of a Sacred Deer. It's a four-star movie I wouldn't recommend to anyone. It's, um... We also talked about The Killing of a Sacred Deer. Yeah, all right then. This is only going to keep happening. A few years down the line, you're going to be saying, Foreigners hate peanut butter. Foreigners do hate peanut butter. <laughs> We've talked about that already. <laughs> I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. It's just a few days until my birthday, and as is tradition, Craig has brought me the gift of a movie. The only stipulation being that it be from a year that we've never watched a movie from on this show, 1945. The year, 1945. The world at war. The movie, Mildred Pierce. Yeah, have you seen it, Matt? No, but that's the one that I would have picked for 1945. <laughs> I know. We've run out of choices. We've done Rome Open City together once. I know you've seen, you've seen Scarlet Street, so I didn't choose that. Let's find out what it's, what it's all about. Released in 1945, Mildred Pierce was directed by basement alum Michael Curtiz. The famously difficult Curtiz did not want to cast the famously difficult Joan Crawford because she was in a career slump and because... He didn't think she was that good. And because she hated wire hangers. You know what it took me a long time to realize? It reminded her of an abortion. Oh, wire really? Hangers? Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay. Kind of kills that joke. A little bit. Luckily for Crawford, the director's first few choices were either not available or were afraid to play a woman old enough to have a teenage daughter. Crawford was subjected to a screen test to prove herself, which led her to getting the part and also led to a whole bunch of on-set quarrels with Curtiz, and it also led to her one Academy Award for Best Actress. It did not win Best Picture, losing out to The Lost Weekend. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. So, Matt, what do you think? Well, I don't see the connection between this movie and that record, Camper Van Beethoven's Key Lime no. Pie. I have not read the James M. Cain novel, but my wife has, and she says that there's a lot of pie in this book. That also leads to this. A gift. A slice of key lime pie. It's a whole pie, but in small form. You know what's weird? What? And I just almost did it again. I've always been under the impression that this story is about a woman reporter. Why? I don't know. I, I was just want... about to say, isn't she a reporter? No. She makes pies. <laughs> so, pierce yourself over to the big leather couch to watch Mildred Pierce. Don't pierce yourself. Mmm. Mildred is a name that is not gonna make a comeback. No. Mildred Pierce begins with a man being shot to death. His final word is... Mildred. Mildred, more like kill, dead. <laughs> That's Monty Berrigan, the second husband of Mildred Pierce. Mildred has gone to the wharf. Hey, you want some seafood? Ah! No animals were harmed in the making of this movie. 500 animals were harmed in the making of uh, this jacket. <laughs> <laughs> she even contemplates ending it all. Cheese it the fuzz. How about you just don't kill yourself tonight? She goes to Wally's and has a drink. Yeah, it must have been a beautiful gal. <laughs> this pie is making me goofy. <laughs> Wally is an old, old friend of hers who hits on her incessantly. He's been on the make for years. She invites Wally back to her beach house. Oh, I'm, I'm happy, believe me. Inside, my heart is singing. This house smells a little corpsey to me. <laughs> Wally makes a pass at her. She knocks his drink out of her hand. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Your touch made me spasm in a bad way. I feel sticky. Oh, so sticky. I feel sticky and witty and gay. I like to hear you talk. With me being smart, it's a disease. Know what I mean? I also had a vaccination against modesty. Wally finds himself locked in the house. Up to the lighthouse. Hark ye! <laughs> Come, Triton! He finds the body. And he realizes it's a frame-up. He tries to get away, but the cops arrive. Hey, stop you! <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Just warning shots, okay. <laughs> and arrest him. For the murder of Monty Berrigan. Mildred goes back to her house, where her daughter Vita is. Just as a precaution, we need to bring you down to the station. There's Wally. Mm-hmm. Bert Pierce, what's he doing here? Sorry, Mildred, I just couldn't no help it. No talking. <laughs> Paper lady? Flesh and blood, actually. The police inform her that she's not a suspect. She's free and clear. Trapdoor. Thump. Because they know who the murderer is. It's your first husband, Bert Pierce. Oh, no. She regrets ever having divorced Bert. Tell us the whole story. Their marriage was tough. They didn't have a lot of money because Bert was out of work. I was always in the kitchen. Making pies? I thought it might be Mrs. Whitley calling for a cake. Cake? The problem, Bert says, is those kids of yours. A dress? For Vita? Mm-hmm. I thought so. Where'd you get the money? Baking cakes and making pies for the neighbors. That's right. Yes! If anything I buy from Vita is for my own pie allowance. Pie! <laughs> but I know it isn't right to... Line. <laughs> Who rang that bell? <laughs> anyway, Bert, I don't like you hanging out with your secretary so much. What's her name? Mrs. Biederhoff. 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 <laughs> oh, uh, hump away. Hump away. <laughs> Biederhoff. Biederhoff. You go down to that woman's house again and you're never coming back here. I mean that. Oh, I go where I want to go. And right now I'm going to go beat her off. Kids haven't come home yet, huh? No, not yet. Oh, I wanted them to hear this argument. <laughs> we'll have to do it again later. The kids come home. K is a little tomboy, and Vita is a young musician. Your father and I have decided to separate. Not a divorce. He just leaves. Dad's not coming home anymore. Doesn't he like us? That's exactly what he said. Now go to bed. Wally comes by that night. He finds out that they're separated, and he creeps it up all over the place. It was because of Wally that the police invented the restraining order. You should marry Wally. Then we can have a maid, and we can have expensive things. I'll get you everything, anything you want. And as God is my witness, I'll never go hungry. Oh, no. Wrong movie, sorry. They didn't want me for that one either. Mildred looks around for a job, and she ends up being a waitress. And she becomes great at it because she's driven, because she wants to get Vita some nice stuff. There she learns all about the restaurant business. She keeps making pie on the side. Doesn't pumpkin and doesn't cherry. You know? Pie! Pie, <laughs> yeah. Have you ever danced in the tropics? Carmen Miniranda. Yeah. I didn't know what to do next, but suddenly it hit me. A truck. <laughs> Mildred wants to open a restaurant. She goes and sees Wally, who's a real estate agent. She's found the perfect property. Hmm, that sounds like a good idea. Let's go talk to the guy who owns the house, Monty Berrigan. So we'll be right down. Faye's the name. No, Faye. Like the fairy folk. Monty's a rich do-nothing who's slowly losing all of his family's property, including this house. He looks like a very weird Jude Law. He agrees to let Mildred buy the house. Wally tells her that if you're going to open a business, you got to divorce your husband, or else he'll be able to come after your money. Bert comes by to take the girls out for a swim. And Kay seems to have a little, uh, little tickle in her throat. <coughs> Here. <coughs> That's some dank weed. Be careful swimming, that water's awfully cold. Berrigan comes by the restaurant where Mildred's remodeling and he flirts with her. You can come swimming. All right. <laughs> he has plenty of swimming suits. It's a bad sign, Mildred. Are you hoarding bathing suits? They belong to my sister. They belong to my victims. <laughs> And they hit the ocean. Oh, the ocean is cold enough to kill my youngest child, maybe. <laughs> Shall I tell your fortune? Can you? I see you shooting someone to death. I can't quite tell who it is. They fall in love. <laughs> Kay has the big P. Pneumonia. Irish? This is Biederhoff. The only woman that can beat that disease off is Biederhoff. More ox. They pull you out of the oxygen tent. You ask for the latest party. 
and she dies. In order to cope with her grief, Mildred throws herself into opening the restaurant, and it's a smashing success. Even Wally's got to put on an apron. After the business closes, Bert walks in. I didn't mean to bust in like this. I meant to bust in like the Kool-Aid man. I'll give you that divorce. You're doing all right, Mildred. You're doing fine. You're doing Berrigan, apparently. Back in the present, the cops are listening to the story, and they're still not convinced. Mildred confesses to the murder. You'll have to tell me the rest of the story, because we're only 45 minutes into this movie. We go back into the past. Mildred's is now a restaurant chain. Mildred Pierce has got lots of money. But unfortunately, she's got lots of spongy people attached to her, like Berrigan and her daughter. They want a little money here, a little money there, it all adds up. You're making a mistake, Miller. This Barragon is no good. He'll bleed you dry. Suppose I'm in love with him. Yes, now I know where I stand. That's right. Now you know. And if you don't know, now you know, Wally. <laughs> Her relationship with Barragon is going nowhere, and so she breaks up with him. These are your packing orders, Monty. You're off. Vita's got a new boyfriend, Tom Forrester. Some are very best reserved for special customers. California, 42. <laughs> 42. They want to get married. But Tom's mother doesn't like the idea. He knows that you and Ted want to get married. We are married. Dun dun! Surprise, Mom. Don't you love Ted? Well, oh, this is a Ted talk. Annulment proceedings happen. Why can't we stay married? I don't see Theodore, why. Theodore, you will be good enough to keep quiet. Where do you get that accent when she talks like this? <laughs> I think we need a cash settlement too. I'm going to have a baby. What? 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 After the foresters give her the money, Vita says, well, maybe I'm not that pregnant after all, but hey, I got $10,000, Mom. With this money, I can get away from every rotten, stinking thing that makes me think of this place or you. I'm going to live the Vita loca! She throws her out, and it's time for Mildred to go on vacation. Comes back. I want my daughter back. I want my daughter back, daughter back, daughter back. <laughs> she finds out Vita is singing at Wally's. She needs a job, too, like she's some sort of schlub. I think you've learned your lesson now. Come back into my life, and I'll make it even better for you. Go away, Vita. Come back, Vita. Vita, Vita, pumpkin Eda. I want the kind of life that Monty taught me, and you won't give it to me. Vita, no. Mildred goes to Monty. How about you and me get married? So my daughter will be happy. A little distracted, are you? Uh, no, we're watching a movie. Figure it out. Vita's come home, Monty. She's going to stay with us. Looks like it's going to be a happy ending after all. Turned off, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Mildred Pierce is not happy because her business is going bankrupt because she's indulging her daughter and her new husband too much, which we all knew was going to happen. Well, it doesn't take long for Wally and Monty to buy her out. Mildred no longer owns Mildred's. Mildred gets a gun. Mildred angry. So you see, officer, I am the murderer. I'm afraid not. We knew who the murderer was all along. It was your daughter, Vita. She's going to who's gal? We go back into the past. She goes to see Monty again, and he's canoodling with Vita, his stepdaughter. In the shadows. Monty's going to divorce you and marry me. Mildred pulls out that gun. Here's your head. Kunk! <laughs> <laughs> she drops the gun, and she leaves. I'm not going to marry you. That was just uh, sex talk. Luckily, my mom left this gun here. Mildred hears the gunshots. I told him I'd kill him. He said I didn't have guts enough. Never say that to someone who says I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and she decides to take the dive, one final sacrifice for her daughter. There are times when I regret being a policeman. But this is not one of them. It's been quite a night of twists and turns. <laughs> she and Bert walk out of the police precinct and into an uncertain future. And I guess that's it. That's it. Well, we've spent some time with Mildred Pierce. Mm -hmm. What do you think? It was a fine movie. I didn't like it. You didn't like it? I found it very dry and stiff. It seemed to reflect what was undoubtedly an incredibly tense production. I think that the pacing of the movie was a little slow. It like, lacked energy. I found myself halfway through, I just wanted the movie to be over. Yeah. Just like, let's wrap this mm -hmm. up. It doesn't help that four of the five main characters are extremely unlikable. Vita, Monty... Wally. And, and Bert. And Bert, who's Bert, just not Bert, interested. Bert turns out to be a nice guy, but yeah. he makes a really bad first impression. And so, as a result, you kind of don't like Mildred either, because she's such a chump. She's a sucker for Monty, and she's really, really a sucker for her daughter. Who's the worst of the lot? Vita. Mom, I want to have more money. I take that back. 
Yeah. Monty's the worst. Because Vito wants nice things. Mm -hmm. Monty has nice things, and he doesn't bother to hold on to them. They're not working for it, either. Monty is a proud loafer, and Vita just wants to be risen up into heaven you yeah. know, the entire time. The heaven of American wealth. Well, I guess she's also a swindler, and she's an ingrate. And he, okay, I changed my mind again. Vita's the worst. <laughs> the movie's a melodrama. It's not a film noir. Well, it's... Or is it both? When I was doing the research for this, you know, there'd be one side I'd look up and they'd say it's a romance, and another that would say it's a thriller, and another one that would say it's a noir, and another that says it's a melodrama. Yeah. So it is a bunch of things all at once, and it does hit all of those, except for maybe romance. It's no romance I want to be, be involved it's with. It's got a few romantic scenes. But it hits a lot of the film noir bases. Mm -hmm. With the shadows. Do we have some more lights in the scene? <laughs> Telling a story in flashback. It's a tough call. But, you know, a movie doesn't just have to be one thing. I right. think the best movies are tied together that way. The exterior of Monty's house is actually Michael Curtiz's house. Or oh, one of his houses. Really? Yeah. It was so close to the ocean that by 1983, the beach had eroded back and the house collapsed into the Pacific. Wow. So you were fooled by the opening. You were certain that Mildred had done the killing. I wouldn't say I was fooled by it. I just took it at face value. Yes. I like the way that she framed Wally. Oh, this is brilliant. But is that Mildred in the rest of the movie? Well, she's obviously driven to take a crappy job to support her family. She's driven to build a restaurant empire. Yeah. And then when pushed into these extreme circumstances of this murder that her daughter committed, she's driven to protect her daughter at all costs. So did you know from the beginning that it was the daughter? I know Mildred discovers her husband with another man. Discovers her husband with another man. Wrong decade. <laughs> this isn't a Tennessee Williams play. Uh, she discovers <laughs> her daughter with another woman. Discovers her daughter with another woman. <laughs> Final thoughts? <laughs> the pencil-thin mustache. John Waters is still rocking it. Nowadays, you can't have a pencil-thin mustache and not be a John Waters type. Is there a way of showing that you're a villain instantly more than a pencil-thin mustache? <laughs> I don't know if I trust this, but I read that someone up for the role of Vita was none other than Shirley Temple. That would have been a startling departure for her. It has happened in the past. Well, facing the crowd, Andy Griffith oh, yeah. playing one of the worst villains in cinema history. And it works perfectly. Henry Ford in Once Upon a Time in America. Henry Ford. God damn it. <laughs> Henry Fonda in Once Upon a Time in the West. <laughs> This is why Matt hires me, because I have these things right at the top of my head, and then I go to the thing right next to it. So, that was Ingrid Pierce. <laughs> We've watched Mildred Pierce, and now it's time for us to sink our teeth into the delicious pie that is Seen It. Seen It. David Sherman, Harriet, directed by Cassie Lemons, was fantastic. Seen It. Seen It. Harriet Tubman is... One of the great American heroes, undoubtedly. Mm -hmm. Possibly even the greatest American hero. My apologies to William Catt. I think she deserves better than this movie. It was a fine movie, but I really didn't believe the third act of the movie. I haven't read up enough on her, but I'm pretty certain that she didn't have a grudge match going on <laughs> with her former owner's son. I didn't think it was very good. I didn't think that Cynthia Erivo's performance was... Oscar worthy, certainly, which is weird because she's in the HBO series The Outsider and she's great. What I liked about her performance was that she doesn't start out as Harriet Tubman. She is a driven woman, she right. wants to get away, but she is is not the great hero that she will become. Not a fan of the script. There's a scene where Leslie Odom Jr. is taking down her slave narrative mm -hmm. and he says, Do you realize you just walked 100 miles to freedom? <laughs> <laughs> she took a cart a part of the way. <laughs> I want to know more about Harriet Tubman. Yeah. And I do wish they would have had more of her Civil War service, because that's when she becomes crazy awesome. They show just a clip of that raid that she goes on. I will say that Cynthia Erivo should have won the Oscar for Best Song, because that song is really good. That's, uh, that song worked. Yurd writes... Keeping up with serial killer movies, seen it? Citizen X! Hey, Scratchy. Don't do that, Scratchy. Despite being made for TV, I think it is one of the best movies about a serial killer to date. Seen it? Yes, I have also seen it. This was an HBO movie. From the mid-90s. Yeah. Uh, it is about a Russian serial killer, Soviet serial killer, and it's really mostly about the man who was assigned to catch him. 
Stephen Ray never looking schlubbier. Man, does he do a good job in that movie. Of course he does. It's a forensic procedural. Mm -hmm. It really brings home the squalor and the bureaucratic hopelessness of Soviet Russia. Yeah, that they didn't even want the killer to be found because that would prove that serial killers isn't a Western disease. Jennifer Mandrin, I have mixed feelings about Julie and Julia. There was something about Amy Adams' performance that, in my opinion, fell flat. Seen it. Not seen it because I hear that the Amy Adams portion of the movie isn't worth it. It's half a good movie. This is two stories. One of the stories is Julia Child becoming a chef. And the other one is about this woman named Julie, who's a blogger, who decides that she's going to cook every recipe in the Julia Child cookbook. The movie goes back and forth. The Julia Child story is great. It's inspirational. It's Meryl Streep. The Julie story is not that great because Julie's kind of not a very likable character. I know you're not a big fan of Amy Adams, but she's a really great actress. At the time I saw this, I was not a fan of Amy Adams. Now, after seeing American Hustle and Sharp Objects, I'm a huge Amy Adams fan. Oh, I think that's she's great. wonderful. A really nice surprise performance in this movie is from Stanley Tucci, who mm -hmm. plays Julia Child's husband. There's a great scene. Julia has just been yelled at by her cooking teacher. She slices an onion wrong. How are you ever going to become a chef? You can't even slice an onion. You woman. That's basically why he's yelling at her, because he doesn't like the fact that she's a woman and she's the only woman in class. Julia's in her kitchen. She's crying her eyes out. And she's got a huge mound of sliced onions on the counter. And she's just slicing away and she's crying. And Stanley Tucci walks in and he says, what's wrong, darling? And then the onions hit him. <laughs> and he goes, oh, oh! <laughs> I always remember that scene when I think of that movie. Stanley Tucci. I saw him on a sidewalk in New York once. Mm -hmm. I'm almost positive it was him. Not some other balding Italian man in New York City. <laughs> Mike Phillips asks, The Lighthouse is definitely my favorite of the year. I think this is a career best for Willem Dafoe. Hopefully this solidifies Robert Pattinson as the great actor he is, and not just the guy from Twilight. Seen it. Hark, Triton, hark. Seen it. A few episodes back, we said that Robert Pattinson was running away from his teen idol image, and man, he, does he do that more in this movie. He's still running. I don't know if anyone in the world has the accent that he does in it. Bill the Butcher from Gangs of New York. Oh, I recognized it right away. All right. I, I love how strange the film is. Mm -hmm. It's one of the strangest probably I've ever seen. But it's a little too strange. <laughs> it's got two or three weird instances too many. Yes. I'm thinking in particular when Willem Dafoe turns into a dog. <laughs> now, this is not a spoiler because me saying that means nothing to you if you haven't seen this movie. And once you start watching it, you'll forget I ever said it. What does he turn into a dog? You don't remember him turning into a dog? I remember him turning into Triton. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about this movie is that it does have a very simple plot. Young guy wants to go up and look at the light. Old guy won't let him. Mm -hmm. That's a basic wants and needs situation that makes for good drama. And oftentimes during the movie, you forget that conflict even exists. Well, but it's also about a, a bad roommate situation. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also about... Being stranded and you don't know if you're ever going to be saved. Just as with Eggers' previous movie, The Witch, the detail accuracy of this movie is off the hook. Well, certainly. Both you and I have gotten down on farts. And <laughs> because, as we are demonstrating, we don't think they're as funny as other people do. As I get older, I appreciate them more. But not many movies use farts as character development. Well, I think the movie had one fart too few. When Pattinson finally loses it and tells him how much he hates his farts and how bad they smell, and then Willem Dafoe says, you've got away with words, Winslow. Should have fart there. <laughs> or Winslow should have farted at some point after that. And it's like, oh, it's just me. <laughs> we don't find farts funny at all. <laughs> There's a place you can go that's not treacherous or lecherous at all, and that's our website. Welcome to TheBasementShow.com. You can see all of our entire vast catalog of episodes, and there are also PayPal donation buttons that you can click on to support this show. You can make either a one-time or rolling monthly donation. You donate a little bit every month. And I'm going to salute some of our rolling donors, Richard, Ferris, Alfred, Nathan, and Sarah. Thank you. If you want to find out who the rest of our donors are and to see the contents of our mail crate, you can watch Unboxing, which is a separate show than this that comes out this coming Friday. All kinds of surprises. And now, this. Good afternoon. Am I following you? <laughs> is that a greeting? This is your customer service? Good afternoon. <laughs> With me being smart's a disease, know what I mean? <laughs>